Good evening, everyone. Time for another Bitcoin report. This is a script D that I posted on the blog. The reason that I've done this is because uh, we're going to go over to Zero Hedge and look at the article that was posted there today. But uh, it's great to see Zero Hedge start covering Bitcoin. Um, it's uh, it's a typical thing that you see when uh, a market starts rallying into new highs or near new highs it it piques the interest of people and of course uh, a lot of the people have been proven wrong who are critics of bitcoin i honestly believe i think the next breakout is going to run pretty hard to a hundred dollars i may be wrong uh, this may be a top but uh, it doesn't look like it in the type of pennant formation i'm i'm seeing forming in the chart right now but i posted this wrapping your head around bitcoin scrib d it actually came from someone, a pro Bitcoin person on Zero Hedge, because there are just so many of the questions that that come up that have been answered so many times, and uh, there's so much misinformation about Bitcoin. Just I've had to go on and answer a dozen questions uh, that uh, I, I'm sure, in all honesty, they're you know they're legitimate questions, but. The thing is, is that I've never seen a topic in my life, uh, and that includes gold and silvers, even silver manipulation and gold manipulation, GATA type stuff, conspiracy theories, uh, you name it. Uh, I have never seen any topic in my life where so many people come out and make so many pronouncements about something that they literally know nothing about, and they repeat criticisms that have already been debunked and are meaningless and I'll go over some of these when I look at uh, Zero Hedge but uh, I wanted to take you to a video that I posted here on uh, on the blog of what happened in Cyprus today and it's pretty shocking basically what has been decided in a completely unprecedented uh, decision that took place during the early hours of the morning is that they will tax uh, they will impose a levy on all deposits of so anybody with a bank account in cyprus and has over a hundred thousand euros will be taxed at nine point nine percent and even those with under a hundred thousand and we're talking about people with savings basically uh, anybody with savings will be taxed if they're under a hundred thousand with six point seven five percent which is extremely bizarre considering that the eu has guaranteed um, private bank deposits of up to 100,000 euros. Gosh, so does it just affect Cypriots or are there people, expats living there who might have bank accounts? Um, I believe the Russians also uh, save money in Cyprus. Well, there's been a lot of talk about the Russians, but what people don't seem to understand is that we have 70 billion euros worth of deposits in Cyprus, and I think something around 20 billion of that is Russian. The rest is not. Mm -hmm. So the vast majority is um, Cypriot residents, people living in Cyprus. Uh, so you're talking about, if we'll take his figures, you're talking about $70 billion and uh, just chopping off 10%. So that's a $7 billion haircut. So in essence, the EU just stole $7 billion from the people of Cyprus and the people who were saving in their banks. One in four people in Cyprus are foreign, so it's not just Cypriots. But I think the biggest impact of this decision is that, that it's exposed the EU for the complete lack of solidarity in terms of how it treats less significant smaller countries. I mean, Cyprus does not have one of those fiscal deficits that's just gone blazing through the roof. We, we've had a, a, a relatively uh, controlled fiscal deficit, but what we did do was suffer under the exposure to Greece. And when the EU came and decided to impose a, um, a haircut on, on Greek bondholders, uh, this affected the Cypriot banks by four okay. billion, approximately 25 percent of its GDP. Okay. So uh, I, 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 well, the average man and woman on the street, people like my parents who've been saving up all their lives working, will now have to pay for that. And I think that's completely unprecedented. And it shouldn't. It's not just something that will impact expats or Cypriots. Okay, Stefanos. Presumably, you just go to your bank today and uh, take out the money, so you'll be below that 100,000 euro threshold. Um, well, even if I'm below that, well, I'm definitely below that 100,000 threshold, but the uh, ATMs are actually, there's long queues at the ATMs, but you can only take out a certain amount, and electronic transactions have been frozen. So, Because it's a bank holiday. As I've said so many times, the way it works is they get everybody in the theater, they lock the doors, and they start the fire. They burn it down on the weekend when you can't do anything. Uh, so... 
I, I really don't know how much more of a warning people need. I, I don't want to be an Illuminati type and say, well, they get what they deserve. But people, you need to wake up. They're screaming at you that they're going to take your money. And uh, you have no uh, alternative except, and we're going to talk about, uh, cryptocurrencies and uh, physical gold and silver and some other stuff. But let's go on here. So there's no real way. And it's a long weekend. It's a bank holiday on Monday. So um, basically, whoever didn't take out their money yesterday, and not many people did unless they were aware of what was about to happen, then every, you know, whoever hasn't taken out their money for yesterday will be impacted by this today. And, and people, everyday people, not the people who spend their money, but the people who save their money will be affected and will have money. A lot of people are calling this daylight robbery. So the bankster gangsters, the, the pinstripe bandits, the uh, legalized uh, criminals have stolen 10% of uh, the savers in Cyprus. They stole their money. They waited for a weekend. They shut down the banks and they stole all the money. So that <laughs> this is what we're looking at here, people. Uh, this is reality. This is not a game. This is what they're doing. So let's go over. Real quick, before we get to the main story, uh, let's take a look at Zero Hedge. Uh, this went on the 15th, actually, yesterday. This is uh, What in the World is a Bitcoin? And uh, Tyler is covering Simon Black's um, article on Bitcoin. Simon seems to be pro-Bitcoin. Um, it, it seems to be breaking down. The battle lines are being drawn. And uh, what I find, find so surprising is when I go through the comments, and I've, I've had to counter a bunch of these. I'm just going to go, go to one that I had to counter here. And, uh, but they're really they're, they're questions that have all been asked a zillion times. As one commenter uh, pointed out, he said, you know, uh, if you would have just spent the time to research the question you asked, uh, you would have found the answers uh, in a shorter amount of time than it took you to type up that uh, post. And I, I don't think he was really trying to be mean. I think he was just, you know, it's really ridiculous that that people would make these arguments that, that, that they're just, uh, there's no basis for them. So uh, here's, here's the arguments that we're hearing now. Uh, the first one is, and I covered them in this post here, so far the arguments amount to, what if the entire internet is destroyed? So you're getting this one a lot, and now that's just, just plain stupid. Uh, but let's say that the entire internet is destroyed. Uh, actually, uh, to tell you the truth, Bitcoin isn't dependent even on the internet. Believe it or not, uh, it's dependent upon the miners being able to communicate with each other and maintaining the blockchain. That does not necessarily have to go over the internet. It could actually be point-to-point -point links on private networks. But I'm not going to go that deep into uh, VPNs and how they work and uh, etc. But uh, needless to say, uh, if the entire internet is destroyed, then we have much larger problems than Bitcoin. Next is what if you're tortured for your password? Uh, this is this is the kind of crazy questions they're asking. Again, uh, if if you're in a situation where they've arrested you and they're torturing you, I don't think you're too worried about your bitcoins, and I don't think they're too worried about your bitcoins. You probably did something a lot worse than that. And again, a lot of the fud that comes out, I'm just so tired of it. It gets so old to hear people say. Uh, I, I think the analogy that I came up with today when I was having a cup of coffee, I looked it down at the spoon and I realized that, uh, you know, the spoon for, for opium and heroin, that is the second most dangerous object in the world because, you know, they all cook up their heroin in those spoons. So if we could just ban the spoon, then uh, we would probably uh, solve this problem. So you can see the lunacy of this. Uh, so uh, again, a lot of the FUD has to do with all well, the people that use Bitcoin are drug dealers and pornographers and uh, they're assassins and uh, terrorists and all this stuff. Well, of course, 
that's nonsense. There isn't even enough money uh, for any of those people who are dealing. I think the UN report on global drug trade is in the trillions. So obviously, you do the math. Uh, there's some banks <laughs> involved with that, obviously. But uh, so uh, this is the typical argument that they make. It could be used for this. Therefore, it's bad. Those arguments are a joke. So. And the last one is, well, if they institute a world police state, they're going to shut down Bitcoin. Well, they're going to shut down a lot more than Bitcoin if they institute a world police state. So, um, yeah, those are some of the arguments. I, I really don't get it. Uh, if, if that's the best they have, uh, they're, they're really going to have to uh, find something else because that's that's not working so let's uh, let's go over to uh, the main story and that's going to be R being the cryptos now this is something I've just got into recently and uh, I, I find it fascinating and let me explain to you why I find this fascinating uh, the ex one of the exchanges that I've been exploring is is Vercurex and uh, the other one is going to be uh, BTC E I've got them both up here uh, you can see them. This is for Gurex and this is BTC-E. And uh, pretty much on both of them, the currency of the realm is going to be the Bitcoin. Uh, now, uh, not so much as much on BTC-E uh, because you can see here's your crosses. Uh, you can call them currency crosses, but they're just crosses. You got Bitcoin dollar cross, Bitcoin uh, ruble cross, Bitcoin euro cross, Litecoin Bitcoin cross, Litecoin US dollar cross, Litecoin ruble cross, Namecoin Bitcoin cross, uh, uh, dollar ruble cross. I don't even know why that's there. Uh, uh, Euro and these. So and there's this Nova coin, which apparently only trades on uh, BTC dash E. But uh, the uh, other one over there at uh, Vicurex, uh, that is uh, trading. You can see that the uh, denomination is much more Bitcoin oriented so you can see the dev coin the IX coin the LTC coin the name coin uh, the the PP coin the SC coin and the TRC coin these coins are trading in terms of Bitcoin now the reason why I find this so interesting is that uh, and in, in fact the way I got uh, the idea is uh, uh, the uh, the kid uh, endworldsuck.com his video about litecoin mining that's what gave me the idea to look into those and that was the point when I realized uh, when I was looking at 47 um, let's pull up the chart here uh, when I was looking at uh, the Bitcoin price coming up and bumping up against this uh, 48 level that's going to be our level we're testing and we can go down and look at the book here uh, I've changed the book. Let me explain to you how you set this book. Uh, you can group by price. What you do is you set, uh, if you don't want to see a large amount of uh, uh, bids and asks, you can set it uh, at a higher number. So if I set the number down at 10 cents, I, I see a lot more. Uh, so if I want to just tighten it up to get an idea of exactly what the supply and demand is, I can tighten it up to about uh, a bit quarter we'll call it and then we can see where the bulk is the size obviously here now on the ask is at um, 15,000 uh, so you can see there's a lot of overhead resistance sitting right there at uh, 48.5 uh, 48 is going to be the key point you can see technically and then 48.5 is right behind it there those are the levels we're challenging so the the thing I wanted to get get to with this is that uh, uh, I was looking at after seeing the well, I'll call this the uh, Chris Duane Smackdown and then we've got the I'm sorry that's Chris Duane Smackdown and uh, there's the uh, the fork and uh, I, I don't have time to go into the fork I'll uh, just briefly explain that to you the the uh, hard fork that occurred was uh, something that happened where there was a problem with the new version uh, 8 of uh, Bitcoin that came out versus version 7 and apparently it was unable to digest the newest blocks so it created a hard fork and uh, so you had the ones running 
version 8 diverging from the ones that were running version 7. What's fascinating about the story, of course, is that the uh, community resolved this issue in a matter of a few hours. And you can see the price of Bitcoin actually sold all the way down to about 36.7 or so, rallied right back. And uh, so I guess there were some lucky people who picked up some Bitcoins real cheap, but boy, it did not last long. And uh, you can see if we go out a little bit, get more granular on this chart, uh, you can see it lasted, uh, we're on the hourly chart. So you had about two hours to uh, pick up some Bitcoins below 40, and uh, then it was all over. So we're looking for that rally, and the reason I'm bringing this up is because uh, I decided that if I wanted to take some profits uh, with this quote-unquote high price, uh, how would I do that? So I was thinking, well, if you're looking at Mt. Gox, then uh, you've pretty much going to liquidate your bitcoins and go into dollars and, and then you're so you're trading back and forth between bitcoins and dollars and then the, the thought occurred to me and I th apparently occurred to a lot of people at the same time uh, that uh, why do I want to uh, go back into dollars when that's the thing I'm trying to get out of why don't I just go into a another cryptocurrency and so you can see here, this is the, uh, this is one I've been playing with. This is uh, PPC, PP coin. It's traded right now on just a couple ex of exchanges. And I think we're just really on the ground floor of these exchanges. So we're looking at, let's pull out to the all time on this, uh, on this. And again, I don't know how much of this is manipulation. It's a free market. You can see the volume that's come in. So it's kind of like a lot of people got the same idea I had at the same time. So you can see that the, the PP coin has uh, uh, taken off from about, uh, we'll call it about uh, one. And uh, you can see it had a run all the way up to about seven. So that's a 700% run. Um, and uh, you can see it's backing off, but uh, it's trading fairly uh, well compared to uh, the amount of run that it's had. So you can see it's still up here uh, trading above uh, four, we'll say. So that's still a good 400% uh, move. Uh, and uh, if we go to uh, the home page on crypto coin charts, you can see that uh, Litecoin, now that was the one that I got into, it was Jerry with his Litecoin miner, he got me into that idea. And uh, so I went and swapped a whole bunch of my uh, Bitcoins for Litecoins. And I did that at about four cents, or I'm sorry, four bit cents on the uh, uh, Litecoin price. And you have to remember that the the cross, we're talking about uh, Litecoins are quoted in Bitcoins. So uh, I'll try to pull that up on the chart here. So I got in about round in here, around five cents, four cents, something like that. Maybe it was over here. I don't remember. Uh, but uh, you can see we had a nice run. We have a, a very interesting rise there. You have a little tiny kind of pennant formation here. You have a much larger pennant formation forming here. So uh, what's the future of this? I don't know. Uh, but uh, it looks promising. And uh, so what is the use of these other cryptocurrencies? Well, one of the uses that I discovered is that you can diversify out of Bitcoin, take profit in essence uh, in something that is very, very undervalued and wait for the Bitcoin market to correct and go right back into Bitcoin. So we're going to go into that um, arbing cryptocurrencies. And uh, again, if you go to this page, you can see there's a very limited market you have the two main ones, BTC and Vicurex, or Vercurex, and uh, then you have uh, the different currencies have some exchanges. For example, the PPC, actually, you can see the volume on Bit Parking PPC has actually higher volume than Vercurex. Uh, Namecoin trades primarily on uh, BTC and Vercurex. TRC, uh, you've got uh, Crypto Coin Exchange. Uh, you don't have trading over at uh, BTC-E. Uh, this uh, Nova coin, I think is what it's called. You can, it's not traded 
on VercurX, it's traded on only on BTC-E. So uh, you have a limited choice, but let's go over and look at those. Uh, let's go back to those, and I want to show you some things about ARBing these cryptocurrencies because uh, you've got two exchanges right now. Obviously, I believe that you're going to see a lot more exchanges. Now, the two uh, things that stand out to me are that you, both of these exchanges have these crosses in currencies. You can see here you have uh, the uh, Euro Bitcoin cross, you have the US dollar Bitcoin cross, and then uh, if we go over to uh, the other exchange, you can see that you've got, as I pointed out earlier, the ruble cross, etc. So uh, what I'm looking for, I thought of doing it myself, but I'm too busy, so maybe someone will uh, do it themselves take the suggestion is uh, creating a cryptocurrency exchange that only trades cryptocurrencies uh, and you can withdraw and deposit just in the cryptocurrencies uh, now the reason why that's important is because as a lot of the uninformed comments on zero hedge uh, point out that, that you have the AML anti-money laundering restrictions you know the uh, the, the KYC know your customer restrictions these are all restrictions that have existed for a long time uh, that FinCEN and the Treasury etc the government uh, is using these restrictions to stop uh, quote-unquote terrorists or money laundering or whatever they're stopping so uh, you you can't just transfer money from a bank over to anyone if it's in US dollars without identifying yourself that's the way the laws are set up. So for that reason you can see that both of these exchanges have US dollar uh, trans I don't know if the transfer is there but they trade in US dollars so they're obviously going to come under the anti-money laundering restrictions and uh, uh, the, I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing uh, that's uh, for, for you to, to decide about those laws if you think they're a good thing or a bad thing but what I'm suggesting is that uh, if you had an exchange that only traded cryptocurrencies you could deposit say bitcoins litecoins name coins pp coins whatever coins you want and trade them amongst each other and don't allow any currencies on that exchange is that uh, regulated I don't know it's an open question you answer that question so let's get over to the arbitrage that's going to be the main issue now if you understand that term arbitrage just simply means that uh, you're taking advantage of a price uh, disconnect in other words a difference in price so uh, the one I've been watching here for example is let's go over and look at litecoins because I lightened up on my litecoins around uh, when we hit around 15 17 diversified in some of these other uh, currencies cryptocurrencies but you can see here the the book on uh, litecoins at uh, uh, Vercurex and you can see you've got a bid the highest bid is 132 the lowest ask is 136 so you've got 132 and 136 on that exchange so let's go and look at litecoins on the other exchange and uh, you've got litecoins here this this is a much more liquid litecoin exchange you can see you've got 134 is the bid and 134.3 is the uh, ask so that's a very very tight market on the Litecoin right now now the question is is how can you arbitrage these markets well it's gonna be a lot easier for you to do an arb trade if you have accounts on both of these exchanges so if you had say 10 or 20 bitcoins over here and uh, 10 or 20 bitcoins over there uh, you could look and see let's say that we had a bid here on litecoins on this exchange of 134 let's say and you can see 136 there'd still be a spread there but let's say someone here is bidding 134 on the litecoins if you had money on both exchanges you could look over on this exchange and uh, see that someone is uh, well <laughs> we're actually at 134 so we need to go to the other one um, let's say that someone is willing to sell uh, at a price below that or uh, buy at a price either way um, you're looking at the difference between those two so what you're looking for is some type of 
anomaly and you have to remember that uh, you're only going to be able to arb with these two the name coins the light coins and uh, that's it really only name coins and light coins uh, you've got bitcoins and US dollars I, I don't recommend trading into US dollars I don't really recommend touching uh, the central bank's currency because when you do that you come under their restrictions if you're just trading in bitcoins and name coins and light coins then uh, you, you're not really uh, involved in any kind of money because they haven't defined it as money and that's that's something that came up in the Zero Hedge article as well is a lot of questions about what are the laws on these well there aren't any laws on these they're going to have to create laws on these they're going to have to define what these are under the law these are things that did not exist when the laws were written therefore the laws can't say anything about them now obviously capital gains tax is applicable because the capital gains tax is already wide enough for everything if you have anything you buy anything and you turn around and sell it for a profit then you're obligated to pay capital gains tax and that, uh, that's on you to do that reporting but as far as the definition of cryptocurrencies under current law they've yet to define them so as I pointed out on Zero Hedge uh, they're going to have to define them at some point my guess is when they do define them that means they're gonna have to publicly address the issue and uh, my guess is by the time they actually publicly address the issue we'll be trading north of a thousand dollars on the Bitcoin by the time they finished addressing the issue I believe we'll probably be trading north of ten thousand dollars on the Bitcoin just because they're going to have to draw so much attention to it uh, by debating what laws they're going to apply to it so it's not an easy thing for them to tackle they're going to have to look at it very carefully and decide what laws they want to pass so back to the arbitrage issue uh, what you're looking for are discrepancies between the two markets uh, if someone is willing to buy something on this market uh, for a higher price then you can buy it on the other market then obviously you've got an arbitrage opportunity uh, arbitrage is much more profitable in thin markets because there aren't that many traders now to be honest with you I've been watching uh, for example this uh, PPC market very very carefully and closely and uh, I've tried my hand at uh, moving the price and I generally get stomped so what I've done is uh, put some bids very low and some asks very high and you can see this market is rallying I have to point out again this is rallying against the Bitcoin so the Bitcoin is already rallying against the dollar and this is rallying against the Bitcoin so when you play these when you arb these cryptocurrencies as long as these don't collapse and uh, again when we go back to our charts um, it doesn't appear that these coins are, are going to collapse let's look at the Litecoin because that's the first one that I looked at and let's look at the all-time it, it appears that a lot of people have gotten the same idea that I got at the same time which is why do I want to sell my bitcoins for dollars when the whole purpose is to get out of dollars why don't I sell my bitcoins for other crypto coins wait for the correction and get back into bitcoins so that's the idea behind using other cryptocurrencies that's the idea between about arbing cryptocurrencies uh, and that's what I'm currently exploring so hopefully that's uh, educational or gives you an idea of what I think is coming very very quickly in the near future and uh, we'll talk to you next time